Hey everyone, I am the Chosen One Legend here, as always joined by my co-host. Hi, I'm Kai, also known as Fesca Ryan. And welcome back to the Bunch of Jokers podcast, where we talk gaming news and highlights and releases from the past month, and I feel like that meme of the guy, like, poking with a stick going, come on, do something, because <laughs> come on, Nintendo or anyone. <laughs> What's yeah, happening? anyone, really. It's so quiet yeah. out there right now, yeah. It is. And on the one hand, as we've mentioned before, I appreciate the time to go through the backlog. Going, I've been playing Spider-Man and Danganronpa. But on the other hand, we do a gaming podcast where we talk about gaming news. So it's like, give us something. But um, yeah. that that being said, there have been a few bits to talk about. We've definitely picked up some bits. I found a few rumours and that that might be worth mentioning. And of course, we always talk about games we've been playing as well. So there's still going to be plenty here. We'll make it work, won't we, Kai? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. We always find a way. We always say it's going to be a short video and it turns out an hour long, so you know how it is. But, it's uh, these kind of let's... videos where that happens. <laughs> <laughs> it thing. is. Never when you least expect it. But that being <laughs> the case, let's get started with our first segment of the podcast. Can't have a podcast without news, baby. But we go over the news highlights I was able to find. And let's start things off with a specifically a me-centric topic. You can tell I'm picking them here, because we got a release date for Star Wars Outlaws, the sort of rogue game where you sort of play as part of like a criminal syndicate, which is coming out August 30th now. Not, not too long. And I'm just relieved because, as far as I'm aware, that's the only game I know I'm picking up the rest of this year at the moment. So, uh... <laughs> oh, wow. It's like, yay? There's something? <laughs> I mean, it's very telling, isn't it? That That's like the only one, just because... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow, interesting state of affairs right now. <laughs> it is. And like, I mean, the game looks good. There's not really too much I can say about it. Other than that, we did mention back when I talked about it before. It's it's cool that you're sort of seeing like the criminal syndicates working together, but also trying to sort of form an organization and you're going to put them against each other and whatnot. It all looks like it's going to be one of those chaotic, pick your own adventure kind of games. And you know, Star Wars content's doing great right now, so I'm, I'm all on board for it. But, um, yeah, it's like, hey, I know something that's coming out that I'm going to be able to pick up. Because <laughs> otherwise, I would have no clue for the rest of the year right now. I, I don't know if you have anything you know you're picking up, Kai, or not. Cause, uh, um, it's... Just, like, Rebirth, I think, and, like, you know, yeah. um, the, the DLC and stuff like that. I, I think that's it right now and then apart from that maybe stuff on the backlog as for like new stuff no nothing yeah that's it <laughs> so we'll um we'll see what else gets released but before then we we got sort of a, a leak of sorts on the sonic the hedgehog 3 film because it's been not officially but all but officially confirmed that shadow the hedgehog is going to be played by keanu reeves and that's perfect <laughs> casting, isn't it? Like, I'd never thought of it, but obviously Keanu Reeves, it's just gun, right? Gun. <laughs> Give the man yeah, a gun. Yeah, I think there are a couple, like, iconic celebrities that could do Shadow and kind of give mm. different versions of him, kind of like how, you know, the Jack Black Bowser thing is like, that fits perfectly for sort of the Bowser that I would say reminds me from the Mario and Luigi series for example, or like some, some yeah. spin-off Mario games, but then they Definitely. just as easily could have been some other actor who does a really good impression of mainline Bowser, who's a bit more like you know, beasty, I guess is the word and I think that's the same mm. case here is that there's a couple different sort of variations of Shadow you could go with where they would have different fitting actors, and yeah, I think Keanu Reeves definitely fits the arc, one of one of those biggest archetypes of Shadow that you could get, um, you know, yeah. sort of a cool, you know, obviously he's going to be like the cool one. Um, yeah, I, I think it'll fit, especially depending on how they put Shadow into the uh, the film. Yeah, definitely, sort of that sort of just badass character, basically. Because I know one other fan casting that went around was Hayden Christensen, who of course played Anakin in Star Wars, and. I feel like that would have fit well if you were going for like a sort of a, a mopey edgelord kind of shadow in that kind yeah, of sense. Yeah, that's what I mean. Keanu Reeves yeah. is a little less like, you know, uh, what, what's the, like angsty, I guess. He's a little bit less yes. angsty, but he's, he's much more that's badass, it. which is kind of what you're, that's the shadow we're going with. Yeah, but he's still like, 
he 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 can do humor as well. I think, especially with a sort oh, of quite yeah. dry delivery. I mean, he's been in. He was in the recent SpongeBob movie. I mean, there's just a random head in a tumbleweed, you know. So <laughs> he can do comedy moments, and it's it'll be interesting to see like what they do with Shadow. How much are they going to take him seriously? How much are they going to go into like the whole Maria thing? Of course, it's, oh god. It, I still have no clue, and footage was like shown at like some recent event, a Comic Con or something, but we haven't got any anything released to the public yet. But I'm, I I need that first trailer just to hear him speak as Shadow. But it's, <laughs> I feel like it's just gonna work, right? It just it makes sense. <laughs> yeah, I agree. It does make sense. It's a good casting, so uh, yeah, we'll we'll see how it goes, see how it fits into things. Yeah, and now I think about it, him playing off of. Jim Carrey's Eggman. I feel like there's a lot of potential in that dynamic. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Definitely looking forward to that. But we did, although it's been a bit of a drought from Nintendo recently, we did at least get an Indie World presentation, which was, I, I thought it was pretty solid. And I guess I'll hand over to you first, Kai. What, do you remember any games from it that you want to mention? Any any standout indies you have a bit of an eye on? Um... Not off the top of my head, which I, I'm a little upset about because I did actually really enjoy the showcase. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I, well, I really I can... should. I'm I'm quickly rushing back to look if you want to take it in the yeah, meantime. Well, I've got two that I want to mention. And the funny thing is both of these got demos, but I have not had a chance to try them out, which is a shame because that would have given me a bit more to mention here. But the first is uh, Anton Blast, which looks like a sort of a Wario Land kind of game, Pete's Tower comparisons. Just... Yeah high energy pixel style charging through levels in chaos like it, it feels like a nice kind of different game from the usual games i play just to sit back and cause chaos for a moment so i feel like there's potential for that i really want to give the demo a shot and the other one was europa which seems like a kind of uh cell shaded open world game of sorts it looks quite peaceful and ambient kind of like wind waker breath of the wild vibes in a weird sense um that's also got the demo out and both of those, I thought, ones that I have a vague interest in, depending on pricing and what else is out at the time they release. But in general, I thought it was a consistent, nice variety indie world. So th there was a lot of cool things in there, I think. Yeah, uh, looking through Europa, I, I definitely agree, is like really interesting. Um, I mm. hate to say it, but it does like remind me of Genshin now, those kind of <laughs> environments. Yeah, um, it crossed my mind. Know, some of the assets. <laughs> But yeah. even that aside, like, you know, a lot of the environment does look really good. Um, I hope it has a lot of interesting stuff in the world, uh, you know, see what happens with it. Um, mm. But yeah, that For an indie good. game especially, you know, not many indie yeah, games have a sort of big open world aesthetic, so... <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and like, outside of that, um, I'm just having a quick look through, but yeah, everything in general was really cool. Um... Where was there was it? one was game where you one play one as a cat, one. which yeah, <laughs> kind of looks like another stray sort. But, uh... I think this this would like there isn't really an indie world showcase without a cat game anymore. I think all of them have yeah. some <laughs> variation of a cat game, and I'm here for it. I like that. Um, mm. Yeah, what was the other one? Um, Refined Self, the personality test game. I thought that was oh, a really yeah. cool idea, where you sort of make the decisions, and then at the end of the game, I think it is, it will tell you what your personality type has been. Um, you know, mm. kind of presumably giving different endings and that sort of thing. Um, it just looks like a really cool, like, short game that you can go through a couple of times and see how it goes. Um, so that one really yeah. stood out to me as probably my favourite of the um, of the bunch. Um, outside That's of what that, I like. You uh, yeah, go on, sorry, while I'm looking. <laughs> I was just Yeah, I was just gonna say, like, in these indie games, of course there's like the stereotypes people say of like, oh every, here's your pixel art platformer game or replicating, but it's not just that. There's indie games have some they cover like the weirdest topics, like the personality test game, that you would never think of as like a video game idea. Like there's nothing else I can think of that's even remotely like that. So it's cool that there's really is that variety in in, in them. Yeah, I think that's the draw that the indie games give, is that they 
yeah. do things that would not be feasible, let's say, for a AAA company. A AAA company wouldn't think of doing <laughs> this kind of thing. I think Voice exactly. of Cards is probably one of the closest things we have, where Square Enix is like, hmm? like, yeah, this is easy to make, we have a huge team, let's just send a couple of people to do that for a bit. Like, Apart from that, you know, sure. you don't see these kind of unique ideas being explored, because it's not the thing that's going to rake in the big bucks. Um, so I really like these guys doing this kind of thing. Um, mm. Valley Peaks looked very good. That kind of looked like a short hike a little bit. Um, oh yeah, I, I, had, very, I actually had to similar. Google to see if it was made by the same team after I watched that trailer because it looks so similar stylistically, just first person rather than two. Yeah, rather than third person. <laughs> yeah, it's made by those awesome guys. So I, I love the name. Um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and the only other one I wanted to bring attention to was uh, Lorelei and the Laser Eyes, which was kind of like escape room horror-ish. Um, oh, right, yeah. And it was like, oh, it's a little freaky, but I like it. I think the variety that they showed off was really good. Um, you know, sucker for puzzle games and all of that. So, uh, yeah, I, I really liked how this one looked with, with the horror elements, the mystery overall. Um, yeah, freaky. Mm. I liked it. Um, and, and yeah, obviously all of them were pretty solid. I think this is one of the strongest indie directs we've gotten so far, but um, yeah, a couple, couple good ones in particular there, especially. Yeah, it was, was nice to have something to sort of fill the void in a main direct, given we never got our February one, you know, so uh, <laughs> this is something. And yeah. also, I mean, talking of new game announcements, uh, Slay the Spire 2 got announced, you were saying earlier, and I haven't seen anything about this, so what's sort of the deal with this thing, Kai? Yeah, so I've, I've played some Slay the Spire, and um, this just popped up on my feed the other week. Um, three weeks ago, uh, Slay the Spire 2, they just dropped a reveal trailer. I think it might have been some part of show a showcase, I'm honestly not sure. Um, hmm. But yeah, they just showed off a little like animation of the characters and the environment and things like that, you know, showing the characters returning. Um, they've got some of the ones from the last game, so for reference, there were four characters who had different like mechanics in the last game and decks. Um, two yeah. of them, the Ironclad and the Silent, who are like the two, the first two you generally play as a back. And then there's a new character who seems to be like a skeleton death reaper kind of person. Um, and you mm. know, apart from that, we haven't really seen much. It was just a lot of like little animation bits to tease it. Um, all we really know is uh, early access is in 2025, so we'll be waiting quite a while. But um, yeah, it's it's cool, and I'm looking forward to seeing what they do because uh, obviously Sl Slay the Spire like paved the way for uh, so much of the roguelike um, series, you know, genre. Um, this was yeah. one of the big ones early on, uh, especially deck building as well. Like you know, things like Balatro are really popular right now, or whatever it's called. Um, and all of that kind of originates from Slay the Spire's, you know, deck building. Um, so yeah, been really cool to see. Really, really cool. Yeah, definitely one to keep an eye on. And the final bit of news I have here, which is, it's just a rumour, but I just thought this was funny enough, that, I, or interesting enough maybe, that I had to bring it up, was it seems to have been rumoured that Disney are in some level of pre preparing for a Kingdom Hearts movie, and oh. it's like the the war flashbacks of my Kingdom Hearts playthrough experience are all coming back to me now. I thought it was over. I thought we had a break <laughs> till Kingdom Hearts Four, but no. And I mean, who knows if this actually will end up being a thing? But I just thought this was fascinating because if they're making like a theatrical released Kingdom Hearts movie, what would it be? Because there's no way they can make it some spin-off with like twelve lore connections to all the different games and obscure references because some person's going to go up to the cinema see a see a disney thing and be like what the f is this watching it you know it's <laughs> <laughs> alternatively the 10 year olds are going to go crazy for it and the millennials <laughs> yeah. at this point i mean god it's 2024 like that's the age category but um yeah <laughs> yeah I, I don't know i feel like they could work even if it was incoherent i feel like people would eat it up um, mm. especially if they did bring in all the Disney characters, I'm sure there's like so many legal things they'd have to handle with that, even yeah, with well, Disney making it, but um, yeah, I don't know. I almost that, wonder that kind of cool. yeah, and I don't know if, if there's any more details in the rumours, and again, if it ever comes to be, but 
I feel like a, like a recreation of the first game, like a retelling, might be more likely at this point. Like, as a way to introduce people, because that, like, it would work as an animated film, you know, and of course with the fact you visit the Disney worlds of Disney running the helm, I'm sure they could animate it and look great. I mean, I'm, I'm not sure I want to see, like, a Disney-fied Sora in the style of, like, the Tangled and Frozen animation. That might be a little <laughs> bit cursed. I hope they don't de-animate de -anima him too much. But, uh, it's fascinating if they can make it work. Like, this has potential to be something interesting. But, uh, I don't know. It, I guess we'll see if it ever ends up happening. But, um... In my it's mind, an interesting I'm kind of concept. thinking they animate him like they did for his Smash trailer. Yeah. I think that could fit. That's, that's, that's very possible. I'm kind of thinking as well, like, there's some animation from, like, Kingdom Hearts 3 in some bits where he's... It's clearly not just the gameplay model, but there's, like, a more detailed animated version of him. And I could yeah. kind of see, like, that working out here. It, it, yeah, there's definitely stuff they could do, like, you know, if they get... You know, Yoko Shimomura back to do all the music and that. Oh, yeah, I mean... Awesome. Exactly, having more compositions based on those. It, it it would be really interesting if they can get it right. There's so many ways that it could go wrong, but video game adaptations have been good recently. You know, Sonic, Mario, Last of Us, Fallout, you know, it's all looking positive in, largely, so... Uh, fingers crossed, maybe? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Similarly, the Zelda movie has, like... Well, loads of articles come out yesterday, uh, or the other day, because of um, oh, yeah. what the director said. Um, something about not going entirely mocap and keeping it grounded. Um, who knows? I think it's all still so vague at the moment that that Zelda movie will be something for a future month. But um, yeah, yeah, it's still going, which is nice to see. They haven't cancelled it. <laughs> nope. <laughs> it might actually live. You never know. But... Uh... In, that's pretty much it, I think, for the news for this month. That's all the highlights we've gone over. You know, we're, we're approaching, like, Summer Games Fest E3 season, so maybe we'll have a bit more to talk about next month. Maybe we'll actually get Nintendo give us more games beyond Paper Mario. <laughs> they might exist. <laughs> no, but until oh, then... God, their advertisement has been so heavy on Thousand Year Door lately, and, like, I'm fine well, there's with nothing it else. I think it's cool. <laughs> but, yeah, like, it's yeah. so funny that, like, they have so little else that, like... They are just like, please remember, we have this game, we have this game, everyone look at this game. Do you yeah. have anything else? Well, Don't worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Endless Ocean released today, and then Luigi's Mansion 2 and is the only other thing besides Paper Mario Thousand Year Door. We literally know of zero confirmed releases after that by Nintendo. So, uh... <laughs> they're cooking, you gotta we think know so that they're cooking. <laughs> They've got to be cooking something. I hope it's good. But we'll we'll be here for it whenever it comes out. And in the meantime, we're going for our backlogs. We're playing games. So let's move on to our final segment, Games Time Baby, where we go over games we've been playing in the past month. And I do want to start things off quickly here, because last month I talked about Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, but I hadn't actually finished it yet. So now that I've been able to, I kind of want to give some of my final thoughts, like, looking back at it as a complete package now. Um, spoiler free, I shall mention, so it's completely safe, uh, I won't go any story specifics. But, I mean, if, if you want to be completely safe, you can just use the timestamps in the description below and skip ahead. But, um, yeah, I, I finished it and I kind of hate to say that I didn't have a great experience with the end of the game. And it kind oh, of really? put a damper on things. Yeah, and, like, I love this game overall, and it's just, I guess the best way I can explain it, in one sentence, is it just felt like too much, and that kind of sums up both gameplay and story, because I, I do feel like by the time I got to the end, the game, I mean, I mentioned before how much side content there was in the game, and I didn't even do yeah. all of it in the end, but it just began to get to the point where in the last 10-15 hours of the game, I was burnt out. And that kind of affected everything to do with the end. Where well, I feel like they could have cut content because it's over double the length of the first game, basically. So uh, <laughs> there's a lot. Um, yeah, which is nuts because I already started feeling like the you know when I play remake lately, it felt like yeah. it dragged on slightly at times. Um, so the fact that rebuff is so big is like wow, I need to really space this thing out, huh? 
<laughs> yeah, and it's like a lot of the content's good, but it's just even if it's good, I think there's still such thing as too much, and I think mm. this kind of proved it. And it didn't help that the ending just again. I'm not gonna say any specifics, so it's hard to really talk about. But of course, it reminded yeah. me a bit of my thoughts on the ending of Kingdom Hearts Three, um, which of course is another Nomura thing, so no surprises there. But not not in story details or anything like that. But like Kingdom Hearts Three, I just felt like there was so much happening and it felt just too much where there were like these moments that were meant to be emotional and these moments that were meant to be hype and they kind of were but because there were so many things happening just none of them were allowed to stick and land and nothing truly hit home even though there was cool stuff in it and it's not the exact same sense but it's similar in how I feel about the ending of Rebirth where it just felt too much and maybe I'd appreciate it more on the second go when I'm not being overwhelmed and I'm not confused <laughs> and all, all that. <laughs> but it just left me thinking, like, I don't know what's happening and is it over yet? Because, uh, no specifics again, but the final boss I did not like either. Like, gameplay-wise, it pissed me off a little bit, <laughs> to be frank. Really? But, um, okay, yeah, that's fun. <laughs> it's, it's very long, the final... The ending of the game is very long and I... I was just like, end, end, please end. I want to finish this and eat my dinner. Please end. <laughs> but um, it's, it's, again, fantastic game overall. I still love it. And I, I like the story ideas. Like, I think it sets up some interesting stuff for the next game still. So I'm not, like, dead with it. It took Once I sort of sat down with it, I was a bit more positive on. But I think for, like, the first time going through it, it's just, again, Nomura being a bit too unhinged and maybe where he should have been held back a little bit because it's very much overbearing. But um, yeah, still great game overall, but prepare yourself is all I'll say and set yourself adequate time for the end. Yes. <laughs> but, oh um, god, yeah, it's going to be heavy. <laughs> I will be fascinated to hear your thoughts, Kai, and honestly, whenever you get to it, I'm almost wondering if it's worth giving it its own discussion, like bring on our friend James or something. Like, there's a lot to unpack. Potentially, but, um, yeah. A yeah, lot to maybe. unpack with that one, absolutely. Yeah, but um, again, I'll, I'll be fascinated to see when you get to it, Kai. It, it'll, I'll, I'll look forward to that. But uh, <laughs> in the meantime, <laughs> what have you been playing before then? Um, I've got, like, I guess three games to talk about, but all of them are quite oh, wow. brief. Um, yeah. So, uh... Which one should I start with? I'll start with one. Um, Mario Wonder. I realised I never, like... I don't think I ever talked about it, despite the fact we've did on, <laughs> done a video on it recently and you talked about yeah. it quite a few months ago. I never I actually, like, <laughs> discussed my thoughts, because I only beat it, like, a month ago, so, I, you know, I yeah. didn't really have much of a chance to. Um, but to be clear, yeah. I have beaten the game now. Um, I, I got it for... I got it, like, around Christmas, and I played it all with my parents, who are both not good at the game to be quite <laughs> frank um but That's i always think that it's helped. a different dynamic. it's a different experience isn't it yeah yeah um and I, I really think it helps because obviously they both play through it really slowly um so that gave me a lot of time who would have just sped through the whole thing like speed running it almost um yeah that sort of gave me a different perspective on it trying to understand it from a casual's perspective is always a fascinating thing um, and just playing through it slowly helps me sort of enjoy it a little bit more, I think, of like, you know, when, yeah. when you're playing on your own, you never really stop to break every block, for example. But, you know, my parents took so long to do anything that I had the time <laughs> to just do random things like that. And there are so many little hidden secrets of like, just ground pounding in random areas will be like, oh, here's a purple coin, I guess. Um, yeah. You know, like, there's a flower there, so here. Um, and yeah, the game's really cute. Um... I, I think it's a really, really positive step. Um, you know, obviously, all the new Super Mario Bros. series has been kind of bland. Like, each game does add something new, but it's never that crazy. Um, it's been a bit devoid of personality, I suppose. Yeah, they all felt very mm. samey. Uh, but this yeah. is completely fresh. Um, it's very, very enjoyable. And yeah, I, I had a really good time with it. Um, the whole game was clean, uh, the controls felt good, the animations were great, the music was great, and the level design, you know, with all of the Wonder Flowers, like, genius idea to, to really add life into the game. Like, can you imagine if we yeah. just got M Mario Wonder without the Wonder Flowers? 
Um, yeah. <laughs> you know, the game it's would be okay at best. <laughs> yeah, it, it's constantly allows things to change up and be dynamic. And that's what makes it so fun. Like, I think the only real kind of weak spot with the game is the boss fights are a bit meh. But otherwise, it's... I agree. Solid all around, yeah. Yeah, I think the boss fights are kind of meh. Um, but to be, like... How do I put it? The Bowser Jr. ones, you know, were normal Bowser Jr. They were boring. But I like how a boss wasn't always the final challenge in the world. Um, yeah, you know, worlds that's three true. and five in particular, like having something other than a boss being the final challenge, um, I thought was really interesting and clever, and I wouldn't mind seeing more of that. Um, cause yeah. it just really shook things up, you know, kept you on your toes a bit. Um, yeah, I, I just really enjoyed that to be honest. And, um, yeah, the overall design of the game was just superb. Um, I had a really good time with it. Yeah, that's good to hear. And, um, I mean, again, if you haven't checked it out yet, Kai and I did some races in Mario Wonder, so that's on the channel. Go give that a look. Uh, it, was, it was quite fun. But, yeah, um, I also, um, to just to add one final bit, mm -hmm. I did do the final badge challenge, so I've, I've 100% oh, the yes. game in every aspect. I've Same. got all six of yeah. the medals or whatever, so I, it's all done. Um, pain, but it's done. I enjoyed it. It was good. <laughs> it was fun. It's a fun time. And, you know, whilst we're talking Mario, I'm going to... So ride off this train here because for my birthday I, I got a uh, WarioWare Move It which I wasn't mm. really planning to get initially. I, I saw I had an interest because I love Smooth Moves. Like, that's a big nostalgic game for me. It was one of the yeah. first games they ever played for the Wii before I owned it myself. I know you love the game too, Kai, you know. So mm. um I, I was interested in this like this new direction for WarioWare, or not new, old direction, going back to that as a spiritual successor. And I ended up getting it, and it's it's good, but I will say it's no smooth moves, and I had my problems with it, so it's kind of a bit of a mixed bag, I suppose. And that's fair. Like, yeah, personality-wise, it's definitely it is capturing that smooth moves essence. How it's it's got the different poses you do, which are all just weird as shit in the best possible way. It hasn't the it has like a narrator introducing them as well, which isn't as good as like the weirdly not what's the word like sensual voice of the smooth moves one it's not on that level yeah. <laughs> but it's still quite funny and they do cool stuff with it but it I don't know, it never felt quite as funny in general and i think that comes down to like even you think the individual stories for the characters like jimmy's one in smooth moves when he starts dancing with the cats and it's just <laughs> off the wall and nothing's ever reaches that level and i'm also not quite a fan of the voice acting they have in it. Like, the voice actors are good, and it works, but I kind of preferred it when it was just like the, hey, you know, it, it's <laughs> kind of like the people... Sorry, that was amazing. <laughs> I can never replicate that Jimmy again, but I don't even ask. But... Uh... <laughs> oh, <dying>. But... It, <laughs> it reminds me of, like, what, you know, what people say about the new Lego games, where it kind of was funnier when they had to do visual gags without voice acting. It kind of yeah. feels a bit like that, but to go to the actual games themselves, they're, I mean, they're just, as, it's, it's WarioWare, it's these short games asking you to do bizarre stuff, it's crazy, it's fun, it's, it's satisfying to pull off. I did think, though, that they suffered more from being less intuitive than they usually are with the motion controls, whereas some of them really took, like, a bit to figure out what the game was asking of you, and when you've got 10 seconds to play a micro game, that's a problem. It, like, they were still good, clever games, but they felt like they needed more time than they were giving you to actually get to grips with them. Like, they didn't feel as right. well designed for the 10 seconds, so I, I failed the challenges more than I ever have in previous Wario games, you know. It just kind of, and it, that kind of did get a bit frustrating at times, which is why overall it's just sort of a bit of a downer package. Um, so, like, not downer, but less than it could have been. Mm. Especially because... It's such a short game, you know, it, it took me like three hours to beat all the main stuff. And I don't have any friends to do like the local player mini games with, you know. So it's, it's just, um, it's, if it was like a longer game, I could forgive some of the short givings. But because it's such a small experience, when it's a bit of a mixed bag, it sort of stays out longer. So I wouldn't quite say I'd recommend getting this unless you get it cheap, basically. It's fun, it's worth checking out, and if we do like another meetup, 
I'll bring it and we can try it, Kai, because I think it will be fun with a friend. But uh, okay. it's it's okay. It's just okay, is what I'd say. Just a little disappointing, but it's still neat to have, I suppose. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. I mean, the voice acting, I believe they've had that in a couple of games lately, and um, they I have. kind of agree yeah. that, like, it's not bad, but I, I, I think WarioWare fits having silent characters on the most part. Um, mm. So it is a shame that they, you know, that's that sort of charm has gone. But you know, it is what it is. And yeah, Wa WarioWare is an interesting one because I feel like there's always a new WarioWare game that's come out or is coming out. Like, you yeah, know, they just keep churning them out. And I really wonder what's the deal with these game designers? Like, how do they keep coming up with this stuff? It's all weird enough as is. How do they have hundreds of them? Like, what are they smoking? <laughs> <laughs> I mean. I wouldn't mind if they, you know, it's the same developers. Take a break, make some rhythm heaven, please. <laughs> yeah, it's just we get some of that? Like, <laughs> please, yeah, re re refocus some of your efforts, because, like, you know, I'm, I'm enjoying all the worry where, don't get me wrong, some of these games are brilliant, but, like, man, you guys yeah. have so much talent, use it somewhere else, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it will be interesting to see what they do next, but, um,. Kai, what else have you been playing? Got anything else? I know you said you've got two more things actually for us, so uh, I'm intrigued. Yeah, um, one of them that I will only talk about very, very briefly is Unicorn Overlord because I'm like 35 hours in or something. I think I actually like oh, 45 yeah. at this point. Um, <laughs> yeah, the game is, is really fun. Um, it's basically it's very similar uh, to how the demo is. Um, very similar yeah. vibes. Um, you know, I think the demo does a good job of getting you into just purely what the game is like very quickly. Because um, yeah. as soon as you start exploring the main, the main like piece of land, that is basically the the main game started. You're not in tutorial land in an instant. Um, I am about, mm. I believe, halfway through the game, but I could be wrong. Um, I've done about fifty percent map exploration, which is what I'm going off of. Um, that makes yeah, sense. the game is yeah. really fun. Um, the challenges keep ramping up. Um, it's <laughs> I've done everything in the game, including a little bit of grinding, and I'm still barely not under leveled. Um, it's like difficult in that sense. Um, it gave me that impression think, just from the demo. I mean, yeah. Yeah, I think I'm. I think the main game maybe balances itself out in a way that it's very difficult to become both over and under leveled. Um, right. So me trying to get ahead isn't working, and it's like, damn, let me, let me grind. <laughs> um, so, but yeah, it, it's really fun, um, you know, recruiting, like, I think I've got like 50-odd characters at this point, it's crazy. Um, and, you know, being only halfway through the game makes it even more nuts. Um, the story yeah. <laughs> is still quite, like, basic. Um, you know, it's all very, very standard stuff, plot you can kind of see coming. Um, Tropey, I suppose, but, maybe. Yeah, yeah, it's it's very standard, but regardless, it is still good. You know, just because mm. it's expected, I wouldn't say it's necessarily a bad plot. Um, you know, they bring in a lot of, like, tropes and ideas that, um, you know, you can kind of just enjoy. Um, they're not mm. anything on the level that you're going to be going crazy over them, but you can still go away from it going, you know what, that was a fun story. Um, yeah. So that's good, music's good, the battling's really fun, so it's just been a really good one to sort of chill with. Um... You know, I think a lot of people would look at that and go, what do you mean you're chilling with that game? There's so many numbers. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I just like to relax with it. So um, yeah, I will add final thoughts when I've completed the game. But so far, it's just been a good time, to be honest. It's just been fun, simple as that. Yeah, I'm glad to hear it. I, I like the demo, and if I get a chance in the backlog, I, I might slot it in somewhere. Maybe I should get to Triangle Strategy first, but you know. <laughs> yes. Play it first. Yeah. <laughs> uh, do you want me to cover the last one, or? Yeah, go. I haven't got anything else to so go for it. Sure. Um, well, it's it's tabs. Um, totally accurate oh. about the simulator because I've I've had this for I a couple of months this. and I've not talked about <laughs> it. Yeah. Um, so uh, yeah, I've had it for a few months now, and I was like, ah, it's in the. I think it was in like the Easter sale or something. So I picked it up there for half price, maybe. Can't remember. Yeah, uh, I might have just picked it up because I felt like it. I really can't remember. But um, yeah, I was like, you know what? I feel like playing tabs. Let me buy tabs because um, I've seen it for years and it looks really fun. So I thought, yeah, let's give it a go. Um, I played for all of the campaigns now and everything, and 
yeah, it's it's just fun. I mean, of course you've seen it, Matt, and like it's just a really fun time. You know, the characters are goofy, um, but there is sort of some genuine strategy in there too, which is quite nice. It's kind of like, you know, yeah. mixing that strategy with a lot of chaos. Um, so I just feel like there's a lot of fun there, you know, multiplayer is a good time, the campaign is a good time. Um, there's a lot of support for custom character creation, like, I, don't, I, I haven't even shown you this map, but you can make your own characters, your own units. Um, oh, which I have no clue, yeah, point. that's interesting. Yeah, so uh, overall it's just like, it's, uh, you know, Tams is no new game, everyone's heard of it. Um, but it is really fun, It's it's one of the best, like fun games I think uh, that's come out in the last 10 years um, it's just good simple like you know banter really <laughs> yeah it just it reminds me what was that meme like years ago of something like who would win 500 lions or something like that I can't remember the specifics oh a billion it's lions based... versus the sun <laughs> yeah it's like that kind of energy isn't it like t to the it chaos is. you can do with it So or a billion I... <laughs> lions versus all the, one of each Pokemon it's very much that yeah. vibe yeah <laughs> Like, a like hundred and... painters versus a Da Vinci tank <laughs> was a common one. Yeah, and it's a Da Vinci tank, I can tell you now. But, uh, <laughs> it's... It, it's fun. It's just, like, I don't really know the depth of the game, but just from the weird games you've done with it on stream, it's been a lot of fun, and I, I've enjoyed sitting it back. And I believe I'm next up to play it. Like, I meant to fight James or something um, next, so uh, we'll see how that goes. Maybe I'll need the, the luck of the painters on my side, but it, it was, I had no clue what to expect, and I had a lot of fun watching you play it, at the very least, so uh, it's, it's been a good time. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, it's good to hear, yeah, it has been fun, it has been really fun, so it's like one of those, it's almost like a party game type thing that I would recommend to a lot of people. Yeah. Um, I You know, I, I, I can't say it's underrated, because obviously Tabs is really highly rated, but um, I, I just think it, it can't be understated how good it is as a concept of just simple approachable fun for casual players it's really good yeah definitely and that brings us to the end for this podcast that's that's about it so thank you so much for watching us as we manage to at least you know get 37 minutes out of this month who knows what we'll get out of next month but you can find it all here on bunch of jokers either on youtube or audio only versions on spotify and podcasting sites all under the name bunch of jokers but Kai, where else can people find your content at? Uh, they can find me at twitch.tv forward slash Faskarine. Uh, currently playing through the Forsaken Maiden, Voice of Cards. Um, yeah, fun times. And some tabs from time to time, except don't come and ask like to be a tryhard, because <laughs> we've already gotten enough of those. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Twitch curse every time. But uh, <laughs> yeah. absolutely check it out. There is a link in the description below to that. And as well, a link to our friend Sam, who's our graphic designer, makes our thumbnail and logos. We might even get him to play Trine 3 with us after all these years. You never know. We're working we'll on it. We'll have to force him. But we'll have to actually, yeah, it, we'll have to confiscate his Kit Kats or something. Confiscate his architecture, maybe. But we'll make it happen. And until then, we'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye. Goodbye.